Hey yo, here's the situation. Idiocy, nonsense, violence. Not a good policy, therefore, we must ignore fighting, fussing. Heaven's at the door, so there'll be no bum rushing. Let's get together because we're falling apart. I heard a brother shot another, it broke my heart. I don't understand the difficulty, people. Love your brother, treat him as an equal. They call us animals, mm -mm, I don't agree with them. I'll prove it wrong, but right is what you're proving them. Take heed before I leave to what I'm saying, or we'll all be on our knees praying. The heavy deep, deep in the heart of the matter. The self-destruction is served on a platter. Making a date, not failing to anticipate. They got greedy, so they fell for the bait. That makes them a victim, picked and plucked. New jack in jail, but did the vets give a duck? There's no one around, cause in jail you're a number. They never took the time to wonder about self-destruction. Hey people, Thursday night, October the 1st, uh, got a nice little show, well hopefully this is going to be a nice little show, uh, I'm going to give a disclaimer right up front because this has been really, really bothering me, so it's probably going to be some language. I'm going to try to control myself and not get too excited. Uh, but here in Chicago, we've had a, just a rash of nonsense behavior and shootings, and and I, I think we really need to talk about that. But uh, as always, before that, we're going to do some some little things first promoting businesses and and things of that nature uh we always start off with my my business is rpc computing rpc is your pc located in lansing illinois 773-416-2955 let us help you with your projects setting up your home office uh, computer repairs and upgrades we appreciate your business have a second business to advertise for you uh a uh, friend of mine, young lady, she's a Remax real estate uh, agent, and her name is Rochelle Millsap. Call her for your uh, Remax needs. Everything is listed here on the card. Uh, you can always reach me at the show at yahoo.com or send us a message uh, on our YouTube channel, the show, or uh, join our YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook, you probably see the link, or if you're on the YouTube page, you'll probably see the link that will take you to the Ustream channel. Uh, we'd love to see you, you join and, and chat it up. Uh, hopefully, some people will start joining the chat room, and uh, we can start really, really, really building this. Uh, second order of business is, I'm, I've been going through my black room. I, I know I told everybody. I think it's important that we start re-educating ourselves, re-educating our children. So uh, another book uh, that's in my black room uh, that I brought out was by Mr. Johnny Cochran, A Lawyer's Life. I, I got this book some years back. Uh, he was a lawyer way before the O.J. Simpson trial. And at one time he was even a public defender and I, I brought this book up because it kind of uh, helps with the story that we're talking about tonight and uh, other stories we've covered where he's talking about the injustice in the justice system and how the equality is so off and how it upset him to have to, have to see so many black men going to jail and their white counterparts getting off with the same... Uh, type of crimes, whereas uh, they may have had someone that could put up some money or put up a home or something like that, and they were able to walk, while the poor black individual, of course, didn't have the money, had to have a public defender, uh, maybe had to uh, take a plea deal, and uh, was put into the system. So with all that being said, tonight's topic is called Hood, Hiding Our Own Destiny. 
Now, I, I know often we talk about a a lot about racism and things that are holding us back, but one of the first levels that are holding us back is our success, our behavior, and it's it's sad because that's all they show on TV. Uh, when when we look at the statistics and we're looking at we're 20% of the population in America, but 65% of the prison population. When you got corporations investing in prisons at a high rate, it's kind of like we're just falling right into that plan. It's, it's, it's amazing, you know, why they call it hood and they don't call it community. A community is full of opportunities and, and things like... Uh, you go to the community center, they got all these postings of all the events, uh, job opportunities, sports events, leagues, it's rec rec recreational area. A lot of that stuff has been taken out of the hoods. So what you got, you got liquor stores, uh, help bad greasy spoon restaurants, and churches. That's what you got. You got vacant lots, run down uh, buildings. My grandma always told me though, it, it's not the place, it's the people. And and she proved that to me. When when I was 16, we moved into what's called the walk-ups, which were the Washington Park homes, uh, located about a block away from Ida B. Wales Projects. And uh, I can remember me and her standing on the porch and I'm looking out like, Look at all these running around. And I, I knew the environment because the environment we came from wasn't that much much better, but it was less people stacked on top of people. And she began to talk to me and, and tell me things. And and she, she started this, this group where everybody in the building took part in keeping the building clean. Uh, taking pride in, in, in the building. Because when I got there, we didn't have mailboxes. There was like a, a, a barrel down at the end of, of, of the stairs that the mailman was putting mail in. It was crazy. But after about a year or two, we had the nicest building over there. Hallways clean, no graffiti, no one peeing in, in the stairwells, no one gambling, no one selling drugs in the stairwells. None of that. Everybody that uh, grew up in that building. We went on to college or went away to the army. It was always positive. And, and the city even even loved that. They gave us paint and, and all types of stuff. And, and it was nice. So she proved the point. It wasn't the place. It's the people. And it's a, a, a mentality. And unfortunately it's a mentality that's inbred over generations that if your mother and father aren't doing anything, this and this is what uh, my teacher, Mr. Phillips, used to tell me way back in '83. He says, "Mr. Robinson, they they building a permanent underclass. If you're not careful, you're going to be caught in that underclass. They're taking away all the programs. They're trying to institutionalize you, even before you get to the prison. So that was '83, and then as I've, I've watched." His words have become true, and I, I'm looking at these kids. I'm, I'm looking at the hopelessness they portray, and, and they don't believe they're gonna live past 21. Uh, and, it, and it's not their fault, and it's, it's not the women's fault. I, t I tell guys all the time, the reason those kids are on the corner is because of the men. The women have never been in charge of taking care of the village or protecting the village. It's been the men that were supposed to, but if you got 65% of, of, of the men in prison, that's another way that society has destroyed the black family. And then the, the men that may be out, the women have been so used to taking care of everything that they're not really coinciding with the men the, the way they should be. And, and they feel like they can do a better job of raising a man than their father who may have been institutionalized. And now he's out and he wants to try to do something. It was it was a case and it really bothered me. And uh, I, I did some mentoring for my church for about four years. 
and it was for young men between the ages of 13 and 18. And one young lady brought her son up there, but I knew he had a father in the home, but she wasn't happy with what the father was doing, and which kind of gave me a conflict because I said, we should always let the father have an opportunity to step up and embrace his son and teach him how to be a man. That's That should always be the father's first job, uh, but she had in her mind, well, I, I don't like this and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we left this young man in the program, but that, that, that bothers me. And you can probably tell it still bothers me to this day because I, I think men should be in the role of raising sons. And I believe women should be in the role of raising daughters. I mean, it's going to be a group effort, but there's certain times and certain things that only a woman can put into her daughter and only a man can put into his son. The reason that the corners are like they are now because the, the men were taken out systematically through government programs such as welfare you can't have a man in the house on this welfare uh prison i'm gonna say it homosexuality think things of this nature all this removed a lot of the the black presence that were in, in the neighborhoods and I, I grew up my father wasn't around but i mean they were around and most people that i grew up with you never really saw their father. There were a few people whose fathers actually lived with them. But for the most part, you would see your father in, in the neighborhood. And whether he was doing bad or doing good, you know, it, it was somebody to put some type of direction into your, into your life. My father really never did a whole lot for me. But what he did teach me is don't be a follower. Stay out of trouble. Be your own man. Get If you're going to get in trouble, get in trouble by yourself. You don't need... This person, this person, at least it'll be your own decision. And he told me, I was, had to be about 12 or 13. He said, look, son, everybody's not going to grow up with you. A lot of your friends are going to get killed. Be in prison. They're going to go crazy. Imagine me as a, a 12, 13-year-old hearing this. And he's he's giving me life from his perspective because he was he had dealt with the streets all his life. And, that, that, and that's what we have now with uh, a lot of young men out there dealing with this hopelessness. And we don't have an infrastructure other than what we've been told and, and pushed into. We don't own the businesses in our neighborhood, but we support everything in our neighborhood, the liquor store and, and these uh, other nationalities that come in, talk to you crazy. So that, that becomes part of our problem, too. Uh, and we're always saying, well, what's the solution? What's the solution? The solution is going to come in, in many different ways. First of all, you have to have a foundation to stand on. So if your foundation is, I'm going to be a drug dealer or I'm going to play sports, that seems to be what a lot of them have. That's the only option they feel they have. But the, 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 most of the time, there's no one there to guide them. And the person that may be there to guide them is the person that has been institutionalized themselves. And they, like I said, they get out and they, they're not going to get an opportunity to change their lives, not in corporate America. So they're, they're forced to go back out here on the streets and, and deal. And it's it, it can get crazy. I'm going to share a little clip with you. It's the streets, Chicago, man. It's a slave state, man. The United States is a slave state. How you think most of us got here, you know? They don't give us no jobs. You know, they send us to jail, put axes on our backs. Every day we do things that we don't want to do, but we have to do it to survive. You know what I mean? It's all set up for destruction, man. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's it. It's all exactly. set up for, for destruction, man. 90% of our fathers went there for us. They probably was on dope or ran off with somebody else. School only took us so far, and it was all on us after that. Either you had a wicked jump shot or you sling crack rock. Those was our choices right there. 
only positive thing you can do is try to take care of them, your kids. That's the only thing that'll make you a man out here. You know, we live in an era where most of us die young, so we learned to, to really, really enjoy that little time that we got here with each other, because we never will know when we leave. One group has to be at the bottom, and we were just that chosen group. I mean, look at the neighborhood, this is the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like an ant farm, ant hill. People going to work, coming home, people raising their kids, cutting their grass. You know what I'm saying? We have society within society here. Not it ain't fair at all. It was never fair. It was never fair to our, to our ancestors, man. It was never fair. I don't get it twisted. I don't sell no drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a job, but you know what I'm saying? I make it look real easy. Aha. Uh -huh. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> we make it look real easy over here. You know what I'm saying? For ain't sure. nothing, you know, ain't nothing to it. You know what I'm saying? But to do it. So let it be what it is. Let it be what it be. And that's that's from Chicago. It was just a, a whole lot of hopelessness in that in that video because I, I felt like these guys want something different. They want to change, like the guy said, you know, the only respect you can get is for taking care of your children. And you can talk to a, a million dudes that's out here doing what they're doing and, and, and living that life, and they'll tell you they don't want their kids growing up in this situation. They're making the best of the situation. And... You can judge them all all day. I, I'm just trying to give you give you both sides. You can judge them, and and I I don't like the way that they feel they have to live because most of the time you're living that way. Somebody is being hurt by that, and and that's the the problem that and this is an eternal problem with us. Of we don't seem to be able to get ahead in certain situations unless we're pulling each other down it's that crab in the barrel syndrome and i don't believe somebody has to to die or be strung out for you to have have a, a life and it's, it's unfortunate when you go to prison and things like this that a, a lot of your opportunities may be taken away but i don't think you can come out here and and, and sling dope and right nobody's making them buy the dope but that's another problem. Part part of the problem is we lose a lot of people to drugs. And yeah, the government may have flooded the, the black environments all around the country with drugs. And a lot of us took drugs. And some of us got off the drugs. And some people are still doing drugs. Alcohol is a drug too, people. Don't think it's not. So how, how do you, you change when you're in such an environment, like I was saying earlier, we've had some crazy stuff going on in Chicago. I mean, we've had mass shootings. The, the I think the, the, the Sun Times even has a page dedicated. This is how bad it's gotten. There's a page dedicated to victims and suspects, and you can go through this page and you can see all the crime that happens in Chicago and and who's getting killed and who's doing the killing it's crazy a couple of weekends ago we had 50 people get shot the weekend after that it was 20 people got shot just a few days ago we had a, a pregnant mother her mother and her son all get shot I think five people were shot, and the mother and the grandmother died along with the unborn infant. Who in the hell shoots at women? What 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 craziness is that? What what would possess you? What's going on in your life that you say, "Let me get this gun and go over here and shoot at women," even if you weren't shooting at the women and you were shooting at somebody else? That seemed like a real punk move that I'm a shooting into the crowd. You can't man up. You can't go knuckle up. This this your thing. I'm, I'm just going to shoot in the crowd and damn whoever. That's the attitude that pisses me off. That's what happens in, in our neighborhoods. As we scroll, scroll through, through this 
there's a, a, a chart here in here that's showing the, the the murder rate. And don't don't think the murder rate just started now. The murder rate has been going on for for years. We're probably at a lower end of murder rate. When I was a kid, we had I, I believe in 1990, I was an adult by this point. We had 1990, 91, 92. I think we almost had like a thousand murders in Chicago. My sister was killed in 1998. That year, I think we had about 740 murders on the books in Chicago. And 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 the only reason that the murder rate isn't high as it, it it has always been. It's because the doctors have gotten better at saving lives. Look at some of these stats over here. Uh, just for this month, September, we had 58 people shot and killed, 303 people shot and wounded, for a total of 361 people shot. That's for, for one month. The stats came in today murders up 20 percent we're on pace right now i think we have like 392 as of this morning to be over 500 murders by the end of the year because we we know how it goes down when the time rolls around people are trying to claim these little corner spots and i don't want to hear people saying we don't know who it is selling drugs because you know who it is selling drugs it's your kids selling drugs it's your brother selling drugs. That's what's tearing down the communities. Like my grandmother said, it's not the place, it's the people, and it's not all the people. It's a few people on their thing, whatever. That's how they feel they got to get down by tearing everything else, else down. Well, what else am I going to do? I don't know what else you're going to do. But can, can you do something that doesn't tear down your people? Can you do something that's going to uplift? I mean, you're out there making that money. Do something positive with that money. If you want to be destructive, try to be constructive on the other end. Take some money, start some scholarships, try to help some other people out of a situation so they don't wind up in the same situation. So they ain't out here as a statistic out here shooting and killing people. For what reason? Like I say, look at look at this. I, I got a stat here. And it says I'm looking for it for the years. In two thousand four, where there's been a steady decrease since nineteen ninety two, where we almost had a thousand murders. But like I say, we just got more trauma centers. Doctors saving more lives, so you got more people living with their injuries. And and we're not the only problem. Part of the problem, and I know a lot of people probably wouldn't want to hear nothing like this, is the police presence in, in, in our neighborhood isn't the same as in other neighborhoods. You go down there to Hyde Park, shit, it's a, it's a cop or cop or two cops. On every corner. They ain't gonna let that go down. You go downtown. Ain't nobody hanging out down there. It's always the west side. And the south side of Chicago. With the high concentration. Since they tore the projects down though. They've kind of spread it out. So it's kind of spread into the suburbs. And things like that. It's still no excuse. We got to get ourselves together. The, the men have to be able to, to step in and, and have some type of help from the police because they're not going to be able to do it by themselves. We're going to need a police intervention. we got to hold these politicians accountable. Why aren't we going to the, the, the alderman's office and saying, this is your ward, this is going on in your ward, what are you going to do? I don't want to hear about this, this, and this. I want to know, can we get some more police presence over here? Here are the drug spots. And I've drove through the hood plenty of times and seen people line up to buy drugs. The cops don't see that? Of course they see it. 
somehow on, on the take. So it is what it is. I mean, uh, this community doesn't have any financial standing, so why would we put police over here to protect what? We're not protecting the, 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 you guys are over here living like animals, killing each other, going to jail. So you you supplying fresh bodies for the for the AR leaks and the cemeteries. And if you escape that, we got plenty of room for you in prison. We don't care if we got to stack you four four or six deep. We got to wake up, people. This is us. This is us. And nobody's beating on anybody because I got on a shirt and tie. I grew up in that same situation, seeing those same things. I'm not high and mighty. I'm just letting you know every day I'm in corporate America and I'm looking at the the the, the level of our non representation. I'm seeing in, in meetings with 60 people and I'm the only black person there. And it's not just our company, it's, it's all these other companies. So first, we're just talking about that basic level of you're trying to do something. And like I say, it, God forbid you, you, you do have to work in corporate America because then that's a whole nother level of, of BS that you have to deal with. A whole nother level, brothers. So, but first you got to get this level together or pool together. Like I say, it's, it's going to take a, a whole lot of effort to, to clean up something that's been going on constantly year after year after year. And the women can't, they, they can't, they can't change it. Because most of the people out there selling the drugs are men, young men, boys, whatever. So it takes men to, men to change that situation around. And like I say, so we got to look at the politicians. We got to look at the older men. Because that's your first line of defense. If, if you have to walk down there every day and say, hey, dude, let's take a walk. Get your older men to walk out there and see what's going on. We don't want, we don't want the brother going to jail. But guess what? We don't want you standing out there on the corner either. So you make the choice. Get yourself in a program or try to find a program. That's going to teach you a trade so you can do something for your family. And I know a lot of people are going to, going to, going to be like, man, screw that. I'm not working for eight twenty-five an hour. I'm going to go out here and get this money. And them dope heads, I'm making them buy it. They can go here and keep buying it. I'm going to keep selling it. So you're putting yourself and that person at risk. Because we, we know if, if you stay in the game long enough, you know when you're going back to prison. But you don't care about going to prison. Because, hey, it's, it's comfortable. You can get everything you need up in prison now. Except a degree, I believe. I think they cut that program. So you, you're making choices in life, and your choices should never hurt your brother. And, and that's what we're missing as far as a community, a, a village. A community has resources, and everybody can pull from those resources, and everybody can grow. The hood doesn't have that. It's survival of the fittest. I was listening to Farrakhan, and he said something, and it, it, it was really poignant. I'm, I'm going to play that for you. Look, y'all all right? Now, whether you know it or not, our young men are cold today. Wait now. These young brothers, see that walk? They're not playing. They'll kill concrete. Young black man is so bad he'll burn water. He's mean. What made him so cold? that they can open fire on one another. And people burying their dead and the brother don't even, he's not moved by it. You say it's terrible. It's so terrible what, what our children are doing. You're right. 
Well, what's more terrible is the reason why they do it. Give me a few more minutes. I'm almost finished. The street constitutes an institution. In the same way that the church, the family, and the school are conceived as institutions. The streets have a set of values and norms to govern and reinforce their existence. The social structure of the street lacks the sophistication that these other institutions have. Nevertheless, it is an institution because it helps to shape and control behavior. And it is on the streets where the black child receives his basic orientation to life. The streets have become his primary reference point because other institutions have failed to provide him with the essential skills that he needs to survive. So he must undergo a rigorous apprenticeship that will enable him to compensate for the lack of guidance from the church, from the home, from the school, from institutions and adults. He becomes a student of the asphalt jungle because that is where he can learn the skills that he needs and the instructors consist of hustlers, pimps, street men, gang leaders, working men that have it hard in civilization, militant criminals. And though these men do not have masters or PhD degrees, their credentials have been earned from actual experience and not from the sterile laboratories of formal academic institutions. So when a young man comes out of jail and comes back home, he's met by his peers. Hey, my man, you back, baby, run on. He said, yeah, I'm back. He's more mean now than he was before. Because he survived jail, he got some extra credentials. Am I lying, brothers? When you come in with your PhD degree, they say, here come this faggot. He's talking all proper. Now, boys, you must not get involved in these gang activities. You must work hard and go to school and be a good boy. And remember what Jesus said. And the man that has been learned in the street, he said, man, look, take that garbage somewhere else. So today the children rob the church and beat the preacher. That's it right there. And I just want to say, I, I, I love my, my brothers and sisters. And it's going to take love as your foundation to move you to any other place in your life. Now, whether you go to church or you go to the mosque, maybe those are starting points. That was a starting point for me. Now, I got Muslim friends, I got Christian friends. You know, it, it, it doesn't make a difference to me where you go, but there, it, it's like a first step to change your life. You got to see better to do better. And you got to reach out for those resources. And I'm hoping that some, if somebody sees this and they know some resources that we can give to these brothers or programs that these brothers could that are coming out of prison. Because like I say, 65% coming out of prison, that's a lot of, that's a lot of brothers. And and we can't let them keep coming out to this hopelessness and 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 going back into the same system that's destroying them. And like I say, it's it's going to take that political piece too. We're, we're going to have to get more political in the black community instead of just voting, 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 uh, just because this is the person you know and has been here. That's going to have to change too. We got to do better. We got to love each other. And it takes a certain amount of love to stop one behavior and to engage in another behavior. You got to love your brother in order not to shoot and kill him. And I know you're not going to be able to get everybody and everybody's not going to be on that page. 
and that that may be the purging process. If I can't change the people around me, then I change the people around me, and, and that's what has to happen. I, I've lived I lived in a building where half the people was doing drugs and half the people were selling drugs, and I'm sitting right in the middle of it. And I'm telling these little young, young drug dealers, hey, not in front of this building. I got kids here. I had to go off on the judge one time. I was a uh, foster parent to my younger brothers and sisters. And I got into it with the judge. And I, all I could tell the judge is, are they selling drugs on your block, Your Honor? Are they shooting on your block? Then don't expect me to live by those same rules that you have the opportunity to live by because I live in the hood. What I say goes. And I'm not following your rules because your rules make no sense in this environment. He was upset because I, I whooped the kids at the police station. Well, that's where it went down. And if more parents would, would behave like that and, and not let their kids get away, no matter where it's at. When we grew up, wherever you at, that's where you're going to get it. That's where you want it. That's how you're going to get it. Period. Society has put such a, a chokehold on us and what we can do with our kids. Don't whoop them kids. Whoop your kids. Just talk to them. We pass talking. It's our kids that are falling through the cracks. Stop listening to, to that nonsense of not disciplining your kids and having some order in your house. Then you just keep getting, well, okay. Then, then you guys got to come arrest me again because they're going to get a whooping again. It's crazy. We've lost control of our, our of our environment. And like I say, I, I can't blame the women. I mean, I, I can blame them for the dudes that they, they have these children with. But other than that, it's the men's responsibility to stand up and... Man only means you're trying to take care of your family. You're not trying to do nothing that's going to separate you from your family. Whatever you can do, if, if that woman's with you and y'all together, then be together. Grow together. Plan together. When you out there selling them drugs, brother, and you go, go away to jail, you are abandoning your family. When you die, you are abandoning your family. Hard for your son to look up to you on that. And that's just the truth. That's, it's hard for your son to look up. Unless you want him to look up and say, hey, you're, you're, you're this drug dealer. I never really looked up to my father. I understood where he was at in his life. But it's a shame I, I can't even say that. I looked up and said, I want to be like dad. No. I want to be opposite of dad. And I love my father. To the day he died, still love him. Still think about him. But he was a, another person that was caught in that environment, that system. We got to do better, brothers. I'm signing off now. We went a little bit over our time. But we'll be back next week with two, two more episodes. And, and I'm always going to try to do something that's going to be a piece of about us because we need to find a way to start building the foundation and, and growing. And I'm open, like I always say, I'm always open to any suggestions or ideas. Shoot me an email at the show, uh, the show 65 at yahoo.com, or uh, subscribe to my, my YouTube page. You can uh, write, write a message there, whatever it takes. In the words of Don Cornelius, love, peace, soul. We out of here. We all agree tonight, all of the speakers have agreed that America has a very serious problem. Not only does America have a very serious problem, but our people have a very serious problem. America's problem is It's one or two suckers, ignorant brothers, trying to rob and
and steal from one another. You get caught in the mid. So to crush that stereotype, here's what we did. We got ourselves together so that you could unite and fight for what's right. Not negative cause. The way we live is positive. We don't kill our relatives. Pop, 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 when it's shot, who's the blame? Headlines, front page, and raps, the name. MC Delight here to state the bottom line. The black on black crime was way before our time. Triple Brothers life with a knife as his wife cried because he died of trifling death when he left his very last breath. Was I slept, so watch your step. Back in the 60s, our brothers and sisters were hanged. How could you gang bang? I never ever ran from the Ku Klux Klan, and I shouldn't have to run from a black man because that self destruction. Funky fresh dress to impress, ready to party. Money in your pocket, time to move your body. To get inside, you pay the whole ten dollars. Scotch tape with a razor blade, tape to your collar. Leave the guns in the crack and the knives alone. MC lights on the microphone, bum rushing and pushing, snatching and taxing. I cram to understand why brothers don't be maxing. There's only one disco, they'll close one more. You ain't guarding the door, so what you got a gun for? Do you rob the rich and give to the poor? Yo, daddy, yo. School is the move. Straight from the mouth. End up in jail and gotta go Cause you could do crime and get paid today And tomorrow you're behind bars in the worst way Far from your family Cause you're locked away Now tell me Do you really think crime pays? Even on taking what your brother had? You little sucker You talking all that jazz It's time to stand together in a unity Cause if not then you'll wear soon to be self-destroyed Unemployed D-Rap race will be lost without a trace Or a clue but what to do Is stop the violence and kick the science down the road that we call eternity, where knowledge is formed and you learn to be self-sufficient, independent, to teach to each is what rap intended, but society wants to invade, so do not walk this path that they laid, it. self-destruction, yeah, it self-destruction, self-destruction, be nice, break it down like this, children grow and women produce and men go work in some do stealing, self-destruction, Keep ourselves 
Check. Check. 